This is the video you've been waiting for. We've got all the essential Disney World travel tips coming your way here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. I'm coming to you today with a big list of the best Disney World travel tips. Knowing how to navigate Disney World is more important than ever, especially with all the recent changes, those price hikes, intense crowd levels, and wild airline shenanigans, right? So the more essential tips that you can plug into your trip, the easier your travel planning is gonna be. We go to Disney World every single day, we fly all the time, so we've got some really, really good tips for you today. Now, if you want your own copy of this list after today's video, drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash best travel tips. We'll send you all these tips straight to your inbox so you can refer back to them while planning away. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's hit the parks. First essential Disney World travel tip is to check those park hours. Disney World park hours can be tricky, especially if you're planning on going to Magic Kingdom while the after hours holiday parties are taking place. Mickey's Not So Scary, which runs August through October 31st, and Mickey's Very Merry, which runs through November and December, happen on certain nights between 7 p.m. to midnight, though you can enter the parks as early as 4 p.m. if you've got a party ticket. If you're not planning on attending one of these parties and you're just trying to mind your own business, having a jolly good time in Magic Kingdom, you may be shocked to find your visit cut short because Magic Kingdom can close as early as 6 p.m. on party nights for regular guests who don't have a separate party ticket. So check the Disney World calendar before your trip to make sure you're picking a time to visit that will maximize your time in the parks. If you're looking to hit up Disney when park hours are at their longest, then you may want to try visiting during the summer season because more crowds plus longer days equal extended park hours. And remember, keep an eye on the hours. They can and do change. And so even if you planned your trip three months ago and the park hours said a certain thing, they may change by the time you actually go. So be sure to double and triple check those park hours before you head in. Next on our list, keep track of your stuff. And we've got a huge tip for you on this one. I've been hearing a lot of horror stories about lost luggage. My friend Heather Seavers, who's dining in Disney over on Instagram, they went to Rome to get on a cruise and basically their luggage was lost. And the only way she was able to get her luggage back before they got on the cruise the next day was following her air tags. She had put air tags into her luggage and she was able to find out before the airport even told her about it that it was at a airport near her. So she went and grabbed it. But that's an incredible advertisement, I think, for those air tags. And it can also help you on things that aren't your luggage. You may be nervous about bringing important items hundreds of miles away from your home since losing your stuff at Disney World is a a lot different than losing your keys in like your laundry room. So investing in those tracking devices could really help ease your worries. Stuff like those air tags or tile mates, those can be linked to an account that'll help track down an important item. For example, you might leave your purse on a bench alongside World Showcase Lagoon in Epcot, and you've got an air tag or tile mate on there, then you'll be able to find out where it is currently located just by looking it up on one of your group's phones or your phone if you still have that on you. And if you have no idea where your luggage might have ended up post-flight, a tracking device can give you a better idea about where it is, if it's en route, or if it's somewhere it doesn't need to be. So Apple AirTags start at $29, TileMate start at $25. This is not an ad, I promise. I just think that they could make a lot of sense for your stuff. Now, another thing I do not travel without anymore is a collapsible extra bag. There are a lot of stores on Disney World property, hundreds, meaning you have hundreds of chances to buy a lot of things. And if you're traveling to the parks and you know you're going to get quite a bit of shopping done, then definitely get one of those collapsible duffel bags to help you carry the extra load. These are also super useful. This is when I use them. When you're trying to repack all your stuff at the last minute and the housekeeper's knocking on your door and telling you that you're 30 minutes past checkout and you just don't have time to fold everything and roll it up and make it really, really small, just shove it in your bag, shove it in that duffel bag and worry about washing it all once you get home. There are so many types of foldable duffels out there. They weigh literal ounces. They fold in on themselves and zip up into themselves. So they're just like the size of the palm of your hand and they can withstand multiple flights. I will say that personally, I use mine all the time. Makes it a great travel companion. The one thing you gotta watch out for here though, of course, is extra baggage fees. So if you're traveling an airline that's gonna charge you an extra like 50 bucks for an extra bag, then keep that in mind. Okay, this next one is absolutely huge. It has made my traveling so much easier, and that's joining TSA PreCheck. So Orlando International Airport lines, as you know, are no joke. That is probably one of the worst airports 
for security lines that I have ever seen. But if you join something like TSA PreCheck, that allows authorized travelers to skip the wait and go into a separate line at security, which usually moves a whole lot faster than those normal lines. So it's kind of like a lightning lane for the airport. Now, usually you have to register for TSA PreCheck way ahead of time, but Orlando International Airport just launched a new day of enrollment for anyone traveling through there. And this process has been reported to take about five minutes or less. No reservations necessary. So granted, you won't be able to use the pre-check for that current trip. It does take three to five days to be approved. But once you are approved, your TSA pre-check status will be good to go for the next five years. So maybe when you land in Orlando, you go do the TSA pre-check thing real quick and then you can use it on your way out of Orlando, right? So pre-check enrollment takes place Monday through Friday between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. Just make sure you have a valid ID and proof of citizenship, a passport or birth certificate. You'll also be required to take a photo during the enrollment process and pay the regular $85 pre-check fee. But again, that fee covers you for all future flights for the next five years. It is so, so useful. I can't even tell you. I've saved so much time in airports. Next, the more convenient you can make a Disney World trip, the better. So let's talk about how we can pull off making your vacation lots more organized. This next tip is downloading your park tickets. Let's say you don't really want to buy a magic band to wear during your entire trip that holds your park tickets and hotel key info, but you don't want to carry around a plastic card you could lose track of if you forget to slip one of them back into your wallet. You can choose a third option to download your park tickets to your Apple wallet or Google Pay account. One of the niftiest things about downloading your tickets directly onto your phone is that in many cases, you'll still be able to access those tickets even if your phone happens to run out of juice sooner than you thought it would. Many iPhones have an express mode that lasts up to five hours, allowing you to access important ticket info even after your phone has kicked the bucket. According to the Apple website, you'll just need to press the side button or the home button when your iPhone needs to be charged to access these cards. But with all that being said, it's a really good idea to have some sort of backup battery charger packed in your bag so you don't have to stress over this feature at all, especially since you'll need your phone throughout your park day to access your My Disney Experience app. Okay, now this is a general rule, but I love this tip, especially if you're only going to Disney World like once a year or this is your big trip, and that's arrive early and stay late. The day that you're starting your vacation, take an early flight drive in early. Make sure you're there early in the morning so you get that whole day to experience your vacation. And then on your last day of vacation, make sure you're leaving on the latest flight out. Get the whole use of that day that you're in Disney World so that you're not kind of cutting yourself off of vacation time because you arrive really late on your first day or you leave really early on your last day. See, super simple rule, but something that's gonna get you maybe two entire whole days more of your vacation. And of course you wanna find the cheapest airfare. Thinking you've got all your expenses already figured out and then you remember you still gotta book those flights, that's super annoying. And there are definitely ways to save on those flight prices. Here are our three favorite apps that could help you save some major moolah on your upcoming flight. There's Hopper, this one's a fan favorite, that can let you know ahead of time if flight or even hotel prices rise or fall. They'll also send you notifications when they see prices drop to their lowest point. Skyscanner will help you get an idea of flight prices, allowing you to look at the whole month or multiple months to see the cheapest dates. You also have the option to plug in anywhere and Skyscanner will show you the cheapest destinations from whatever airport you're flying from, that's super fun. And Dollar Flight Club, if you don't have particular travel dates in mind yet and are happy to travel whenever, Dollar Flight Club is going to show you cheap flights for the near or distant future. That way you'll have as much time as you need to plan around the flight you've booked. Again, these are not ads. These are just apps that our team uses and has found to be valuable and useful. Now, want to make sure everyone in your group is going to be well off during your trip? Then listen up you wanna link your group's tickets ahead of time. A lot of your Disney World trip is gonna revolve around your My Disney Experience account, whether you want it to or not. This app's gonna allow you to make mobile orders, keep track of photo pass photos, hold reservations in one place, and give you the ability to create lightning lane selections when you purchase Disney Genie Plus. And that's not even half of what this app can do for you and your group. It can also find you bathrooms. This is very important. But that's why it's so critical to make sure you're connected to an account with all your travel party and family members, because if your park tickets are not connected, you won't be able to let one person make the selections for all of you as a group. When it's every man for himself out there, it makes things lots more complicated for everybody to make reservation times together. But let's say someone in your group has already has a My Disney Experience account that's separate from yours. Is there a way to combine these into one singular travel party? 
absolutely. You just need to use a linking code. To track down a linking code, tap on the three horizontal lines on the bottom right hand side of the My Disney Experience app, then hit My Profile. Once there, tap on the Show My Linking Code and your link will appear as a QR code. So when someone scans that QR with their camera, they can add you onto their My Disney Experience party. Easy peasy. Okay, I've got a lot of My Disney Experience tips throughout this video and all of them are super important to keep track of, but let's talk about the My Disney Experience tip that could determine whether or not you'll get on the most popular Disney World rides. Yep, we're gonna talk about starting your boarding pass process a little bit early. Now, we've got lots of videos about how to use the boarding pass or virtual queue process in Disney World. This is an extra special tip that we don't talk about very much. So there's one ride in Disney World that currently uses a virtual queue, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind over in Epcot. Now, this isn't always gonna be the case. Eventually, a new ride will probably use this system, <coughs> Tron, <coughs> and Cosmic Rewind will default back into a regular old physical line like the other experiences on site. But whatever the case may be, if you want to ride the newest rides in Disney World, you're going to need to familiarize yourself with how that boarding group system or virtual queue system works in order to grab your spot in line before it fills up. There are two boarding group drops that happen during the day, one at 7 a.m. and one at 1 p.m. If you want to increase your chances of getting a boarding pass during that morning drop, you can actually start this process an hour in advance. Beginning at 6 a.m., you'll be able to tap on the virtual queue button of the My Disney Experience app and set your party right then and there. That way, you'll have fewer steps to worry about when boarding groups go live. On the app, under Join Virtual Queue, you'll find a button that says Confirm Your Party. Once you hit that button, the app will show you the folks who are linked to your account. Make sure everyone in your group who's wanting to experience the ride that day is selected, then confirm the party. Now, when 7 a.m. rolls around, all you'll have to do is join the virtual queue. But also remember, everybody has to have a park pass for that particular park that day. So nail that down ahead of time or else these folks aren't going to be able to be connected to you in the virtual queue system. Okay, the next tip, this one's pretty easy, but it's definitely essential. It's booking your advanced dining reservations 60 days out. If you know the table or signature service restaurant you're wanting to dine at is a hot spot in Disney World, then you're gonna need to make those advanced dining reservations 60 days out. But here's the thing nobody really knows about. I don't mean 60 days out as in you get up, have some breakfast, take a shower, walk the dog, then make the reservations sometime before lunch. If you are serious about getting these reservations, you gotta book them at 5.45 a.m. Eastern time since that's when Disney's gonna make them go live on their site. So plan on booking these coveted reservations via the My Disney Experience app or the Disney World website because you're gonna waste a ton of time trying to call and secure them on the phone. If you follow these steps and you still manage to miss out on those reservations, don't lose hope. Keep checking on them periodically until it's time for you to leave for your trip. There's always the chance that another group is going to have to cancel, and if that's the case, you get to swoop in and secure your spot. So 5.45 a.m., I'm not joking about that. All right, looking for the best of both worlds when you're at Disney? Then let me teach you how to juggle. Consider a split stay. What if you want to save money but still experience the lap of luxury for a bit? Then you may want to book a split stay in Disney World. Start your vacation at one of the value resorts like Disney's Pop Century or Disney's All-Star Sports, for instance. Then transfer over to your dream deluxe resort for a final couple of nights hurrah without having to pay for the high-end stay every single night of your trip. The best part about having a split stay on Disney World property is that cast members will be able to transfer your luggage across the resorts for you from one hotel room to the next. Just let one of the front lobby cast members at your first resort know what's up so they can plan a smooth transition from place to place. Now, if you don't remember this next tip, it could wind up costing a whole bunch of money on a whole lot of nothing. Don't forget to cancel your reservations before it's too late. Let's say someone in your group booked reservations for Oga's Cantina and Disney's Hollywood Studios for 9 a.m. because sometimes those are the only available time slots Oga's is gonna have left. But after much debate and deliberation, your group decides that instead of heading to a bar first thing in the morning, you wanna try to hit up Rise of the Resistance around that time before the queue gets really packed out. So what do you do with those Oga's resis just lying around in your My Disney Experience app? I'll tell you what you don't do with them. Do not leave them there collecting dust. If you're a no-show for your advanced 
dining reservation, Disney's gonna charge you 10 bucks per person for a cancellation fee. So a family of four could wind up paying $40 for a restaurant you didn't even go to. To prevent this, cancel your reservations before the 24 hour window opens. That way your cancellation will still be free. Similarly, if something happens where you can't go on your Disney World trip at all anymore and you need to get out of your hotel reservation, you can cancel 30 days before your trip for a full refund. And if you cancel two to 29 days before your trip, you may still have to pay a $200 cancellation fee if you didn't book a room only reservation. And if you don't cancel before that 24 hour window, your hotel reservation may be non-refundable. So definitely look at the cancellation policies. If you're booking a room only reservation, you have to book five days before you arrive. If you're booking a vacation package, then you have to cancel 30 days before you arrive. Now, I know this next tidbit of advice is gonna sound silly, but hear me out. You want to pack layers. All right, I know you think this is bizarre because why would you pack layers for sunny, sweltering Orlando, Florida? Well, just because Florida is known as the sunshine state does not mean it's always hot, especially if you plan on traveling during the winter season or even early spring. Weather fluctuates a lot here, so having layers that are easy to pack away in your park bag means you can strip off items when you're feeling toasty, but you can also add items when the sun starts to set and the temps start to cool or you head into an extended time in AC. Believe me, you can be sweating to death outside and then go into a dining reservation and sit there for 10 minutes and be freezing. Now, I've also been to Disney in January, February, March when the mornings and evenings could dip into the 40 degree range, which feels colder than usual with the added humidity. So jackets, headbands, beanies, scarves, gloves, woolly socks, even hot hands packets can be great travel companions before the sun decides to peek through the clouds and warm things up a bit. It. I find that scarves are the most important. That can really, really warm you up without taking too much space in your bag. Oh, you know what else you can throw in your suitcase? How about some super awesome exclusive DFB threads? I mean, if you're dressing for Halloween and all, you can get your Hocus Pocus on, or maybe you'd rather sport a pumpkin shaped Spaceship Earth tee. We've got an awesome family tee you can get for everyone in your group. All of these are available on the DFB Store website. It's merch.dfbstore.com. They're great for the spooky season. They're great for any season. We've got holiday stuff coming up soon. So whether you're in the Disney parks or not, definitely check out those shirts. Now back to the money saving tips because I know how much you love those. Trust me, I do too. Next on our list is buying souvenirs ahead of time. If your kid is still in that phase of life where a toy is a toy, no matter what shelf they grab it off of, then you can save a whole bunch of souvenir money by just paying for Disney items for your little ones before your big trip and kind of sneaking them in there so they think you got them in Disney World. Local dollar stores usually have all sorts of fun Disney items like bubble wands, sticker books, plushies, even some mini ears that you can get toddlers for way, way, way less money than you'll find on official Disney World soil. You can also look on Amazon for mini ears or dress up items, especially if you're looking to bulk purchase a certain item for several little ones in your group. Now, what else should you be buying before you hit up the parks? Disney-inspired snacks. Disney snacks aren't just available in Disney World. You can find those Disney snacks almost everywhere, even in your local grocery store. There are those Mickey-shaped goldfish crackers, Pixar-themed cereal, Disney princess fruit snacks, you name it. Get a handful of these for your road trip to create a nice little snack basket for your kids. These also make for great snacks when you're in the parks. Just pack them into little Ziplocs and take them along with you. Disney doesn't care if you bring your own food to the parks, just as long as it doesn't need to be heated in a microwave or kept frozen. So if you pack some of these snacks to munch on throughout the day, you can save money on having to purchase overpriced prepackaged snacks in the Disney gift shops later on. And I think it's safe to say you can invest in several items before you hit up the parks to make your life 10 times easier, especially if you're trying to stay cool and level-headed. Now, this next tip is an oldie but a goodie from the DFB team, and I don't care if people make fun of us for talking about this all the time. It is incredibly important important, and that is ordering water and staying hydrated. Drinks like soda and teas and bottled waters can get really pricey after ordering them for every meal and every person, so try asking for those free cups of water at quick service locations. Some fast food spots like the Epcot Festival booths may not have free water available, but many of the quick service actual restaurants that are in the parks all year long will. You can also pack a reusable water bottle and fill that up at all the water refill stations located in the parks. It's definitely a good tip. Don't forget about it. But how can I talk about a Disney World tips video without addressing one of the most stressful parts of the parks? Answer, I can't, so let's discuss. You're gonna track down park shortcuts. 
If the crowds are getting to you, even outside the queue lines, then you're gonna wanna find the roads less traveled by. In Magic Kingdom, avoid going directly through Cinderella Castle if you wanna avoid the crowd congestion. Instead, choose the paths that cut around the castle. Even if they're a longer route, you shouldn't be accidentally bumping into someone every few seconds. Some of our personal favorite less crowded pathways are the cut through where Liberty Square transitions into Frontierland and the path in Adventureland near the entrance to the Swiss Family Treehouse. In Epcot, the pathways are usually pretty straightforward, but the main drag leading up to World Showcase can see an influx of folks. You can always choose to cross the bridge walkway from Future World over to the Odyssey Center instead for a more peaceful stroll. In Hollywood Studios, avoid the route that trails past the ABC Commissary Quick Service on Commissary Lane if you absolutely hate bottlenecking paths. Instead, go for the path that wraps around Echo Lake. You got a lot more space to spread out there. In Disney's Animal Kingdom, one of the most spacious and lesser known walkways of the park stretches past the Festival of the Lion King show and underneath a stony bridge leading you down a long walkway that stretches across the water and past a bunch of greenery on your right. Not only is this peaceful, but it's also another way to get to Pandora, world of Avatar that most people don't know about. Sometimes you'll find the best Disney World escapes and deals in the places you least expect them to be. So our next tip is to look into happy hour deals. Many Disney Springs restaurants are happy hour central and no, it doesn't need to be five o'clock somewhere for you to take part in the savings. So here's a quick list of some of the Disney Springs restaurants and bars who put the happy in happy hour. Frontera Cucina has Margarita Mondays and Tequila Tuesdays, meaning you'll get a $5 classic margarita every Monday and $5 shots of Tromba Blanco each Tuesday. Now it's a party. Haleo will often have specials like Sangria Hour and Vino Wednesdays, but always check the Haleo website ahead of time to see what offerings will be available during your visit. You can get $7 margs and domestic beers at Paradiso 37 between 3 and 8 p.m. daily. And if you want to see even more happy hour offerings for restaurants like Raglan Road and STK Orlando, you can hit up the Disney Springs website for their most updated happy hour listings. Disney dining stressing you out? Well, you know we've got a guide for that, right? Like a full-on digital guide with all our tips, tricks, reviews, and deals, all jam-packed into one easy-to-navigate book, which you can find on the DFB Store website. Just head over to DFB Store. Dot com. But in the meantime, here's a tip directly from our guide because you deserve a sneak peek. You should always ask about food modifications. If you or someone in your party has a particular palate or a special diet that relies on a very specific set of food groups, then you're not going to want to pay a whole bunch of money for food that has an allergen they can't eat or something they're not going to like. So don't be afraid to ask cast members working at these restaurants about making food modifications. In many cases, unless it's a pre-made quick service meal or dessert, cast members and the chefs will be able to help you make sure you're eating food that you love, that makes sense for you, and that is safe for you. So when you're making that advanced dining reservation, note any allergies that you have. And when you check in, note allergies that you have to make sure that the chef can come out and chat with you about it. And even if you have picky eaters, you can also ask your server about food modifications for them as well. We've got more tips and tricks about how to make sure you'll find the best Disney meal ever for you and your group, as well as reviews of all the Disney World restaurants out there. Check out our 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which is also featured on the DFB Store website. That's dfbstore.com. And don't forget to use code YouTube to save on your total purchase before checkout. Now, Disney World is one of those best of times, worst of times experiences for a lot of us. And if you want to avoid those worst of times, at least some of them, then you're going to want to hear about our next piece of travel advice for sure. And that's to use minivans for quick Magic Kingdom pickups. So minivans are Disney's rideshare service featured on the Lyft rideshare app. And though minivans can be more pricey than the average rideshare pickup, they also have major benefits, particularly if you order one to get to and from Magic Kingdom. Let's say you just got done watching Disney Enchantment, Magic Kingdom's nighttime spectacular for the 50th anniversary celebration. Now you gotta navigate around the mass hysteria that is Magic Kingdom post park day, meaning you got hundreds of guests rushing to the the park buses, monorails, and ferry boats. If you're trying to beat the park crowds and you decide to splurge a little on a rideshare pickup, you're still gonna have to take a ferry or monorail over to the Transportation and Ticket Center to track down the rideshare pickup location. That's if you book a regular Lyft or Uber. And that kind of defeats the purpose of trying to skip over those major lines in the first place. 
But if you book a minivan, your little polka dotted vehicle will pick you up right where the Disney Resort buses are, meaning you can skip all those lines and head to your hotel in a jiffy. That's right. Basically, minivans are the only ride shares that can drive all the way up to the entrance to the Magic Kingdom. If you don't book a minivan, you've got to go all the way to the transportation and ticket center to get your ride share. The main downside of this service is that you'll have to plan ahead. Now, aside from the cost, which could run about $35 to $40 for a single ride, you won't be able to schedule your minivan too terribly far in advance since they're subject to driver availability. So there is the possibility that a minivan will not be available immediately after you exit the park. So whether you've got to wait for transportation or not, it's always nice to know that Disney has several transportation modes for you to choose so you won't have to ever worry about being stranded somewhere. All right, next up is, of course, that rider swap tip. Sometimes kids aren't going to be tall enough for the big kid rides, and even if they are, those rides could still be a little too intimidating. But if everyone else in your group wants to ride and only one person can't or won't, then tensions could run high. So who's going to have to hang back and miss out? This is where rider swap comes into play. Rider swap lets part of your group wait in the main queue line of a ride while one or two folks stay behind with the ones who can't or won't ride the attraction. After the first part of your group is done with their ride through, they can switch with the people who had to stay behind. But because of the rider swap system, the second part of the group won't have to wait in the entire queue line all over again. They'll be able to walk through the lightning lane path and on up to the front of the ride. Just let the cast member at the front of the ride know you're interested in using rider swap and they'll get you all set up. Now, this next point is going to be very, very important for a certain group of folks. Did you know about the Ears to the World translation service? If you're traveling with someone whose first language isn't English, then you can rent a translation device from any of the guest relations areas at the Disney World parks. There are several different languages you can choose from, like Spanish, French, Portuguese, German, and Japanese. Just keep in mind that not every attraction will have alternate commentary, but many experiences will. Now, I don't mean to personally attack anyone with this next piece of advice, but I know some of you may need it way more than others. Just saying. Remember Disney's bus limitations. Disney World's buses that pick you up from your resort can take you to a Disney World park, Disney Springs, or a Disney water park, and that's it. So if you're staying at Disney's Art of Animation and you need a ride over to Disney's Wilderness Lodge to make it to your Whispering Canyon Cafe reservation, you won't just be able to hop on a bus to get there. It's going to take some extra planning if you still want to use Disney World's complimentary transportation. Instead, you'll need to get on a bus to probably Disney Springs or one of the parks, but Disney Springs will probably give you less of the crowds, and from there you can transfer to a Wilderness Lodge bus. Or you can also schedule a ride share and skip over the hoop jumping entirely for an extra fee. Now, who's ready to take to the skies? This next tip is for flying, and remember to pack with your flight in mind. If you're planning on flying and you're relying on your flight attendant to whisk down the aisle and bring you a set of complimentary earbuds so you can watch Disney movies and listen to music while you're in flight, you could wind up out of luck. Many airlines don't provide those free earbuds anymore, or they run out before getting down the rest of the aisle. So, if your airplane has screens on the back seats of the planes to watch your shows and listen to your tunes, you'll need to plan ahead and pack a pair of earbuds with an old school headphone jack, since many of the airlines still use the OG headphones technology. Another item you're gonna wanna pack? gum for two reasons. For many folks, descending on a plane can make your ears sound like microwavable popcorn because of the sudden air pressure changes. So chewing on gum can help relieve some of that pressure. And gum is also not sold in Disney parks or at Orlando International Airport. So if you'll want some, you better get some ahead of time. Now, this is another great tip for if you are traveling through airports. You'll definitely want to wear those easy to slip off shoes for flight checks. So before you go through the full body scanner during a flight check, you're going to have to remove your shoes and put them on the conveyor belt of the bag check area if you are not a TSA pre-check member, which is why wearing something simple like sandals or flats is going to make things a lot easier for you. Just slip off, slip in the bag check bin and be on your merry little way. More importantly than that, wear socks. That way you don't find yourself standing barefoot on the gross airport floor. Just think about how many shoes have walked through that place. If you do wear something simple on your feet though, make sure you've always packed away a couple good pairs of park shoes in your luggage. That way you're not stuck wearing flimsy shoes throughout all of the parks, which would absolutely destroy your arches and make your feet miserable. Pack shoes that have good arch support and are decently broken in, but not to the point that they're falling apart. Another quick tip for going through security and shoes, if you wear boots, some of us wear boots in the winter, those often have little pieces of metal in them to add structure. So plan on having to take those off as well. Okay, this next tip is super, super useful. What am I saying? All of these tips are super, super useful, right? <laughs> 
This one saved me on a recent Epcot trip when I was starting to feel very, very motion sick. You can use the first aid centers when you need them. It's a good idea to have those over-the-counter meds on hand in your bag if you need them, but if you rode those spinning teacups one too many times and you're starting to develop a bad case of motion sickness or a relentless headache, you can always track down a first aid center for something to help settle that icky feeling ASAP. First aid centers are located in each park as well as the water parks and Disney Springs. And the parks also have baby care centers that you can dip into if your little one needs to eat, have their diaper changed, or just step out of the heat and into a more relaxing environment for a minute or two. Baby care centers also sell everything you need for your kids, so if you didn't bring enough diapers, no problem. Okay, in addition to OTC meds, you're gonna wanna pack these essentials in your park bag. Sunscreen, check. Wallet, check. Phone, check. What else do you need in your park bag? I've got three other suggestions that don't take up a whole lot of room, but still manage to make a huge difference, especially when it comes to keeping everything clean. First one is Ziploc baggies. If someone in your group is eating a lollipop and decides they wanna save it for later, you're so not gonna hold on to that lollipop, nor are you gonna wanna shove it in your park bag, all sticky and saliva coated. But you're not gonna wanna flat out throw the sucker away either. You paid good money for that. So a Ziploc baggie can help preserve the sweet treat without making a mess in the process. Ziploc bags are also great places to put wet clothes. They're perfect for leftovers. We use them all the time when we're eating a bunch of food at a new restaurant. And they're good to put your devices in if you're going on a water ride. So Ziploc bags come in hugely handy. Next one, hand sanitizer. Disney does have hand sanitizer stations around the parks, but they're not always full. So if you don't wanna be left hand sanitizer less, it's good to have a travel size bottle in your park bag for when you need to smite the extra germs. And wet wipes, kinda in the same vein as the hand sanitizers here. Clean hands are happy hands, but on the big plus side of wet wipes, they can also clean other parts of you. And they can clean tables, they can clean chairs. A lot of times, if it's a super busy day, the cast members maybe don't get around to clean off all of the counter service tables before you need to grab one from someone just leaving. So that's a good opportunity to use your wet wipe just to clean down the table. Nobody ever wants to put their hand in something sticky and they weren't the one that put it there. Now, you've got to be ahead of the game for so many of these Disney World experiences. you got to reserve hotel rooms in advance, book dining in advance. You've even got to make park pass reservations way in advance. But were you thinking about making reservations for this next item on the list? We're talking about renting a car early. Rental cars do not come cheap, but that doesn't mean they're not flying off the shelves. Booking a rental car around the same time you reserve your hotel room if not earlier, can help guarantee you'll have a car for your Disney World trip. Because trust me, booking a rental car at the last minute can be a major pain, especially if you're traveling during peak season times. We have definitely landed at MCO and not been able to get a car, so book those in advance. And you've got a lot to think about when it comes to your Disney trip. So if you do rent a car, the last thing I want you stressing out over is something you can't control. So familiarize yourself with the car care services on Disney World property. This is how Disney can give you a helping hand with any car issues you might be experiencing. They can set you up with car rentals, repair services, and roadside assistance if you're in need of some more fuel, a battery jump, or just a tow in general. Prices vary depending on what types of services you may need, but you can learn more about the different offerings on the Disney World website. Site. They've also got a physical location, if need be, not too terribly far away from Magic Kingdom, right across from the Speedway gas station. Now, if you're a major planner who likes having all their ducks in a row from the start to the end of a trip, then you're gonna hate me for this next tip. Okay, maybe you'll thank me. I'd like it way better if you thanked me. But it's have a plan B for everything. I hate to break it to you, but that picture-perfect itinerary, it's probably not as picture-perfect as you were hoping it would be. Weather could ruin your park day, someone could wind up sick in your group, you could oversleep and miss your Mirrors Connect bus. The list goes on and on. And that's why it's always good to have a backup plan. If the weather's looking grim, try planning some indoor activities instead, like bowling at Splitsville Luxury Lanes or catching a movie at the AMC Theaters in Disney Springs. If someone in your party is not feeling great, give them some space to relax back in the hotel room for a bit before they reconnect with the rest of your group. Or have them reach out to Advent Health through the My Disney Experience app for a virtual non-emergency appointment during your vacation. And if you hit that snooze button one too many times, be thankful for the 24-hour services of most rideshare apps to 
to get you from place to place when you're tight on time. Just remember you'll have to pay for that speedy travel privilege, but at least it's there for you. Now, if you need even more tips for what you should do when disaster strikes in Disney World, you can watch our Disney World video that talks all about what you can do when uncontrollable circumstances come your way, like floods, hurricanes, illness, and even flat tires, because guess what? They've all happened in Disney World. Okay, another great tip to think about before your trip is signing up for point systems. Plan on traveling to many other places besides Disney World, or maybe you're planning on going to Disney again and again, then you're gonna benefit from signing up for those specific rewards programs for airlines, hotels, rental cars, even restaurants. So airlines and hotels, depending on the company, will have different types of rewards programs, but essentially they're pretty similar across the board. You can sign up for a frequent flyer, frequent stayer, frequent car renter program to earn discounts on things like future flights, rental cars, hotel rooms, etc. These programs are usually completely free to sign up for, so it's always worth looking into ahead of time. And of course, restaurants have these programs too. Look at Earl of Sandwich or Landry's Select Club. Sign up for their programs and you may be able to get free stuff at Disney restaurants. By the way, we've got a whole chapter dedicated to those rewards programs in our DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining that I mentioned earlier. Now, remember how we were talking about lost items earlier? Well, what if I told you it was possible to lose something even bigger? Okay, next on our list is using that car locator feature. Something else we talked a bit about in our recent disasters video was how incredibly easy it can be to lose your car in a Disney World parking lot. They're huge, but fortunately Disney's come up with a new solution for that. The My Disney Experience app now has a car locator function. You can find it by tapping on the three horizontal lines on the bottom of the screen, then scrolling down toward the bottom of options. Once you've parked your car in one of Disney's lots, you can save the info in your My Disney Experience app and refer back to it later when you need to track down your car again. Just make sure to do this when you're in your parked car because it won't work after you're walking out and about enjoying your Disney day. Now, hey there, Disney Dining Plan fans. This next tip is for you. But really, anyone planning on eating at Disney World can use it. And that's preloading some gift cards. If you're one of the many folks who's desperately missing the Disney Dining Plan, then how about you make your own? You can purchase preloaded Disney gift cards to help you keep track of how much you're spending on dining. These also become really handy when you use them for the Epcot Festival booths, since it's easy to lose track of your budget amongst all the different foods and drinks you're going to want to sample throughout World Showcase. And bonus, if you're a red card holder at Target, then purchase your gift cards there. You'll be able to get 5% off your purchase, even when it comes to Disney gift cards. So in the end, you're going to get more money for what you spent. Now, this tip is going to save you so much time and so much stress, along with a lot of annoyance with crowds. You're going to mobile order during less popular dining times. Just because you're planning on using mobile order on the My Disney Experience app to order your quick service meal instead of waiting in a physical line doesn't mean you're not going to experience a longer wait than you were hoping for. If you try to mobile order at a popular quick service location during peak dining hours, like noon for lunch and 5 or 6 p.m. for dinner, then you may find a sorry there are no times available notification pop up on your screen. That's never fun. That's because nearly everyone is trying to order around this time. So if you're late to the game, you may find yourself having to order hours later than you wanted to, which is even less fun to encounter. Try ordering your food during less popular times, like a later lunch or an earlier dinner, and plan on snacking on something else while you wait. This might be a good time to start pulling out those Mickey-shaped goldfish crackers we talked about. After all, it is the snack that smiles back. All right, so many tips so far, and we've still got more to go. Don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash best travel tips if you want this whole list sent to your inbox before your big trip. All right, next on our list, this is a huge, 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 very important tip. Take screenshots of everything. As great as the My Disney Experience app is, technology has the tendency to fail. And sometimes reservations just disappear altogether. Sometimes mobile order crashes, sometimes Disney Genie Plus is a whole lot less about the wish granting and more about the disappearing. So screenshot all of your reservations just so you have receipts to pull up when you need to talk to guest services about a certain glitch in the system that's throwing off your groove. That's also important to do for non-Disney reservations too, especially when it comes to flights and hotel reservations. You also need to save any email receipts that those places will send you after your purchase so you can refer back to those if an issue or unexpected charge arises. Really, screenshots, take them. Put them in a folder, on your phone, so you know how to find them. Definitely, definitely important. Now, I told you my Disney experience was gonna pop up a lot in this video, so you're gonna become a pro at navigating this app in no time. Our next tip is to check in and out of your resort virtually. Wanna skip the resort check-in lines? 
My Disney experience is how you do it. Before you even leave for your trip, tap on the future plans section of the My Disney experience app, then select start check-in. You can set your pin number to charge to your room, make room requests, let them know when you'll be arriving and more. When your room is ready, you'll get a text notifying you that you're clear to access it with your magic band or digital key, which is also on the app. For the record, just because you're checking into your room virtually does not mean you'll get to check in earlier than your original time stated. But if you want to potentially be checked into your room sooner rather than later, you can always try waiting to talk to someone at the front desk of the lobby. But again, there's no guarantee your room will be ready at the snap of your fingers, but you can always kill some time over at Disney Springs or at the pool at the resort itself. That's why you pack your bathing suit and your carry-on. All right, nervous about your upcoming Disney World Resort stay? Let me help you put your mind at ease. When you're checking into your Disney World hotel through the My Disney Experience app, you will have the option to put in a special request. Maybe you want to be closer to a certain resort amenity like elevators or the lobby, or maybe you'd prefer to be on the bottom floor, or maybe you want to be placed at the end of the hallway so you don't hear other guests running past your room early in the morning, or maybe you want a full balcony. Putting in a request increases your chances of having that hotel wish granted. Now, making a room request doesn't mean you're flat out guaranteed the room you've asked for, but it never hurts to try. You can also make a room request when you're checking in at the front lobby of your hotel. If you decide to bypass the online stuff and go straight to a cast member for check-in assistance, that's where you can make a request. Now, if you wanna do something like request a partial Savannah view room at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, if you've booked a standard view, that's when you call the resort a few days early, about five days before you check in, call the resort and see if you can leave a room request on your reservation. That's where you request things like certain areas of the hotel or an obstructed view at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Now, let's say you're in your hotel room and you realize how thin those walls are. Yep, we're gonna talk about bringing some noise canceling or at least helping items. You paid a lot of money for your super nice room at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. And I don't wanna be the bearer of bad news, but those rooms are not soundproof. In fact, none of the Disney World hotel rooms are soundproof. So if you've got some giggly neighbors and super early risers, late night partiers, then you may be in for a rude awakening, literally. Of course, if your neighbors are being a little too rambunctious, you can always let a cast member at the front lobby know what's up, but for situations like snorers or crying babies, there's not a lot you can do for that. Those things just happen. Same thing goes with the group you're bunking with too. If little bro tends to talk in his sleep or dad gets up four to five times a night to use the restroom, you could find yourself wide awake. If you want to guarantee a good night's rest, then pack those noise canceling items like earplugs, headphones, white noise machines are really, really good if you've got little kids who need to get to sleep early, air purifiers, whatever you prefer that's easy to bring along. Long. I've also known people to download free white noise apps on their phones to listen to throughout the night. Just make sure something like this doesn't keep you from charging your phone. It shouldn't. Now, some Disney World souvenirs seem useful until there's a catch, but even then, you can make the most out of your purchases if you do your research ahead of time. So you need to learn where you can use those refillable mugs. Refillable Disney World mugs can be a real nice investment if you know how to use them. These mugs can only be refilled at the main quick service locations of the hotels, as well as several pool bars. You'll have to ask and see which ones will honor your refillable mug purchase. So if you're getting one of these refillable mugs with the sole intention of refilling it while you're at the parks, you're going to be disappointed. So start off your day filling up at your resort so you can take a full drink into the parks with you from the get-go. Then you can refill your mug throughout the day at the water stations just to stay hydrated. Refillable mugs can be extremely beneficial if you plan on having one or two resort days where you'll be hanging around your hotel and hitting up the pools and different recreational activities in that area. That way you'll have easy access to refills all day long. And then you can take your mugs home with you and use them all the time. Now, next up, something that gets Disney World guests really worked up when they learn about it at the last minute. Do not forget about Disney's parking fees. Yeah, gotta love those sneaky fees that pop up for you out of seemingly nowhere. If you plan on driving your car to Disney World, you'll have to pay between $15 and $25 per night to park in a resort parking lot. However, when you pay this fee as an on-site guest, you won't have to pay for parking at the parks themselves, whereas other guests staying at non-Disney-owned hotels will. 
and usually parking at the theme parks is a $25 per day fee too. So don't think you can just get out of paying to park if you decide to stay at a good neighbor hotel instead. Some good neighbor hotels will also charge for their hotel parking, meaning you could wind up having to pay double to park at both the hotel and the theme park itself. Make sure to research hotels ahead of time and track down any of those little hidden fees that could make your bill go way up and become a lot more than you were planning on paying. Now, good neighbor hotels can be super misleading in other ways too. You gotta know where those buses are going to be. Good neighbor hotels may be pitched as an option for guests to save money and still receive very similar benefits that the guests staying at the Disney World hotels receive. But that's not always true. Yes, lots of good neighbor hotels do have shuttle services that'll pick you up from your hotel, take you to the parks and come back again, but some aren't so straightforward. Some buses you may have to pre-schedule to pick you up, some run less frequently than the Disney World buses, and some will even charge you each time you hitch a ride. These buses also get the short end of the stick, or the parking lot, when it comes to where they can pick you up and drop you off. Good neighbor hotel bus stations for the parks will be way out in the boonies away from the rest of the Disney buses. But even worse than that is where they're located in Magic Kingdom. Unlike the Disney buses that park fairly close to the front gate, you'll have to take a ferry or monorail over to the Transportation and Ticket Center to track down your good neighbor bus stop. And like I mentioned earlier, those crowds trying to get over to the TTC can be a nightmare. So don't be caught off guard. Check out the website of your good neighborhood hotel before you book your room and make sure to clarify how the bus schedules and drop-off pickups work while you're at the front desk checking in. Now, Disney World does a great job at accommodating all types of guests, which is why this next piece of advice is so important. If you're planning on using an electric conveyance vehicle, an ECV, in Disney World, then these are the three most important things you're going to need to remember. One, ECV rentals at the parks are first come first serve, but you are able to bring your own or bring one that you've rented from another company like our good friends over at Buena Vista Scooters. Two, rentals will cost you $50 per day at Disney World, but you'll have to pay a refundable $20 deposit or a $100 deposit at the Disney water parks in Disney Springs area. Three, if you're using a park hopper, you won't be able to take a Disney rented ECV outside the park you got it from. However, your ECV purchase is transferable, so when you arrive at your second park, show a cast member at guest services your receipt of purchase and they'll be able to hook you up with an ECV there. So next important thing you're gonna to wanna to do is research accessible rides and transportation. Whether someone in your travel party is using an ECV or wheelchair to help them get around the parks, you're gonna to need to know which rides and transportation options are wheelchair accessible since some experiences will require you to transfer out of your ECV in order to use them. Disney's got a webpage completely dedicated to attractions and how accessible they are, ranging from which experiences are ECV and wheelchair friendly, which attractions for which you must be ambulatory, and which experiences will require some sort of transfer, either from an ECV to a wheelchair or the ride itself before you're able to ride. Now this also talks in depth about how you'll be able to get around Disney's complimentary transportation offerings via ECV and wheelchair. Though most modes of Disney transportation, like buses, Skyliner, monorails, and most boats, won't require you to transfer from your chair to a seat and the buses will even provide a lift to help you get on board with an exit with ease. Some boats may have different guidelines that aren't as easy to navigate around. It's always best to ask a cast member at one of the watercraft docks about what accommodations, if any, will be provided for you to ride. All right, so many things to remember, so little time, you could definitely use a helping hand, and that's when you want to consider a travel agent. It can feel overwhelming to juggle all that vacation planning yourself. So if you're feeling your trip start to become more of a chore and less fun, you may want to reach out to a reliable agent to help you plan out your itinerary. They can book dining reservations and keep track of any resort or ticket discounts they come across. Our friends over at Small World Vacations love helping people feel good about their upcoming trips. They're an earmarked diamond producer, which means they've got the official Disney World seal of approval for their guidance and customer service. And they're completely free for you to use. You can check out their website to learn more about the services they provide. Now, this next one is super, super specific, but it's going to help a lot of people. This is a story directly from Bria. She experienced this herself. Last time she was at the airport trying to catch a flight to MCO, her carry-on bag went off during bag check. 
And she was taken to the side where they could inspect her bag, but they couldn't find what was causing the trigger. And they rustled through the clothes. Everything she'd tucked away so neatly was completely destroyed. And they did that for 15 minutes before she finally asked if there was anything she could help them find. And the security guard checking the bag said, we're trying to find either an aerosol bottle or an inhaler. And of course it was her inhaler. It had been tucked away into one of those hidden pockets of the bag. She hadn't even thought about it because it was still in there from the last time she traveled by a car. So moral of the story, make Make sure anything like that goes in a clear bag so the airport security doesn't wind up getting real familiar with all your stuff. Put those inhalers in clear bags. Now, some Disney World purchases just aren't really necessary to make, so if you want to save more money, consider the following. Don't purchase Disney Genie Plus if you don't need it. Lightning lanes can be a solid way to bypass the main queue lines of Disney World rides and attractions, but you're not always going to need to spend the $15 per person per day for that privilege. So before you fork over the extra cash for Genie Plus access, ask yourself the following questions. Am I traveling during peak season? Genie Plus can be extremely useful when you're traveling during peak seasons like spring break, summer vacation, or winter holidays. But if you plan on visiting around January or February or when classes are starting back up for the new school year, crowd levels have the tendency to be a lot tamer and easier to navigate around without having to use Genie Plus. Now this isn't always the case and anomalies do happen, but this is the average trend we've seen time and time again throughout the parks. Number two, will I be visiting Epcot or Disney's Animal Kingdom? Though you can really benefit from the Genie Plus system for a day at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios since they have the most rides with the longest lines, Epcot and Animal Kingdom are usually pretty chill when it comes to their queues. That doesn't mean you're not going to see lines for rides in either of those parks, but even if a line is ridiculously long, there are a lot of other things you can do while you wait for those to die down, since both Epcot and Animal Kingdom aren't too terribly ride heavy. Three, are you willing to wake up early or stay in the parks late? If you said yes, then you may be able to hit up several rides and attractions without worrying about Genie Plus, especially if you're using early theme park entry or extended evening hours. Four, are the rides I actually want to ride featured in the 40 plus attractions available for Genie Plus? Some lightning lanes will not be available for you to book with a regular Genie Plus purchase. More popular rides like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Magic Kingdom or Rise of the Resistance in Disney's Hollywood Studios are going to require that a la carte purchase that ranges between $7 and $17 per person per ride. You can always choose to purchase from the individual lightning lane entrances instead of doing the Genie Plus route, or you can do both if you really don't want to worry about wait times at all. And five, will I or someone in my group be using a disability access service pass? DAS passes give guests with disabilities, which prevent them from standing in extremely long queue lines and their families, a chance to pre-schedule return times for rides before their trip, kind of like the fast pass system used to do. You can certainly double up on Genie Plus and DAS passes if you want to, but it's definitely not necessary if you don't want to spend the extra $15. Now our next tip is to learn about disability access services. Those with disabilities that prevent them from standing in queues for an extended amount of time can apply for a DAS pass. This pass lets guests with disabilities and their travel parties pre-schedule those attraction return times. They act kind of like a lightning lane, but instead of scheduling one ride at a time and stacking up many lightning lanes throughout the day, you'll book three return times at once with the DAS pass. There are two ways you can sign up for this service. First, you can go online before your trip and register via live video chat, which is definitely what I recommend since that'll save you lots of time, or two, you can visit one of the guest relations locations on the day of your visit. Still not a bad option, but more time consuming. Now, I know you don't want to hear about these next tips, but I got to fill you in because they're crucial to keep in mind. Oh man, is it time to leave Disney World already? Well, if it is, then you want to think about getting to the Orlando International Airport or whatever airport you're going to a little bit early. If you're not relying on the Mirrors Connect or Sunshine Flyer shuttles to take you from your Disney World hotel back to the airport, then you'll be relying on either rental car or rideshare service to deliver you to your flight. But MCO gets packed. It doesn't matter how early in the morning your flight's gonna be, that place is big and it's hopping at all hours. So plan to arrive at the airport a couple of hours before your flight, just to make sure you got enough time to get through security and bag check. Now that's where that TSA pre-check is gonna come in handy. 
And the next tip is to brace yourself for the sun. On the opposite side of the whole jacket ordeal we talked about a couple points earlier, Florida is called the sunshine state for a reason, and more often than not, your park visit could be really, really hot. So here are a few of our favorite items to pack for the parks that'll help protect you from those intense Orlando rays cooling towels. I did a little experiment. I got a cooling towel and I got one of those personal fans that you wrap around your neck. The cooling towel won hands down. You get it damp, you place it around your neck, you sigh in relief. You don't have to worry about batteries running out. You can always find some ice water to dip that thing in. It is fantastic. Get those cooling towels. Spray on sunscreen. Just remember to apply often. One spritz at the beginning of the day is not enough. Hydration multiple packets. Electrolyte drink mixes just like the liquid ice. IV hydration multiplier, those can keep you hydrated. Just keep adding them to your water. The anti-chafe balm, because the heat plus walking all day, plus thighs rubbing against each other, arms rubbing against your sides, massive chafing. So definitely bring that anti-chafe balm. And five, handheld misting fans. Disney does sell these, but they'll be way cheaper if you buy them from your local big box store or off Amazon before your trip and your kids will have so much fun with those. Now, this next tip is super overrated, but it is really, really important. You wanna double, triple, and quadruple check your room. This is one of those pieces of advice that'll make you roll your eyes. Yeah, of course I'm gonna make sure to grab everything from my hotel room before I leave. But seriously, this can be the biggest Achilles heel for some folks. When it's checkout day, you're gonna have a lot on your mind, so it's easy to let something slip through the cracks. Did you grab your razor out of the shower? Did you get your purse out of the safe? I once left a passport in a safe on a cruise ship. It was horrible. Did you grab your leftover Gideon's cookie out of the mini fridge? I have left a whole bottle of champagne in a mini fridge before, my friends. Did you retrieve your new stitch socks out of the third drawer on the right? There are a lot of nooks and crannies in your room that are easy to overlook, especially if you're trying to pack everything in a whirlwind before an early morning flight back home or before that dreaded checkout time comes. So make sure you've got others in your group to hold you accountable and be accountable for others in return. And if you already know that your group members aren't going to be the most reliable when it comes to retrieving all their stuff, plan to pack up the night before. Just find a time when you're going to be the most alert, which may be easier said than done after a Disney World trip. All right, consider yourself officially informed with the best Disney World travel tips around. Don't forget to reach out to us at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best travel tips so we can send you a PDF of everything we talked about in today's video. And while you're at it, also let us know in the comments what your favorite Disney World travel tip is if you've got one, because there are definitely hundreds more out there that we can add to this list. And remember, it helps so much for all of our viewers to see what your experiences are as well. It's great to help each other. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.